Okay, we're gonna try to demonstrate how we do the breadboard ends uh, that's featured on most of my tables. Um, now we wanted to put a groove because the end of the table is going to be the tongue and the breadboard end is going to be the groove. However, we want it exactly centered on the breadboard. So rather than being very careful and measuring from one end to the other, the groove, by the way, is three eighths of an inch. And what I do is I use a, uh, two dado blades, which are a quarter of an inch. And so how do we get it to three eighths is run it twice over the blades from one direction and turn it around, run it from the other direction. So it's exactly centered. You take off the same on each side, in this case, 5 16 So my handy dandy little uh, square here, we measure off exactly 5 16 Because this is one inch thick, minus 3 eighths is 5 eighths, divided by 2 is 5 16 So here we go, let's see what happens. Carefully turn it around and run it the other way. Then we have a groove that's perfectly centered on the board. And it's a lot easier to cut with a quarter inch data than a three eighths, obviously. So from here, um, we go over to the mortising machine to cut the square holes to accept the square ebony pegs. Over to the mortising machine now, which we have already set up so that it's exactly centered on the thickness of the board. Clamp it in place tightly, very tightly. And there's a 3 8 inch uh, mortising chisel in there, which is basically a, a, a drill bit inside of a square uh, column. <laughs> um, obviously, we already drilled that one. So we go over, and the stops are set on the layout lines that I have marked here. And we'll give it a go. Not very dramatic because it only goes down 3 16 of an inch. Um, we can do the other end. The tricky part to doing these is getting it set exactly centered on the board. Um, basically you bring the, the chisel down, rotate it by hand slightly, and then turn the board, do the same thing again, and when the the two little dots, the two little holes line up, you, you know it's centered. Okay, so now we have the mortises that eventually will accept the uh, ebony plugs. Now, I have to make the table, the ends of the table fit into here. Snugly, but not too tight. Okay, so we have the breadboard end all set to go, and it has to fit into this tongue on the tabletop. Now I've, I like to sneak up on joints like this because they have to be tight enough but not too tight so as to split. Um, so I think hopefully we only got one more pass to make because this is obviously too tight here. You don't want to pound it in with a mallet. So we got the router set up with a uh, fence on it that's adjusted so it just comes into the the end of the tongue. Now I've got to wear glasses and the ear protection because this is loud router. Here we go.
Let's see. I think we probably might have to do the other side as well. This is here, block of wood on the end, to prevent tear out when the router comes down to the end of the cut. It goes into this block of wood rather than tearing a piece out. <laughs> the groove is obviously centered on the breadboard, so we have to take off the same amount of wood from one side of the table as from the other side, so that the breadboard sits flush with the top. And um, it, <laughs> it made a lot more dust yesterday, but uh, now I'm just taking off a fine shaving to get that perfect fit. I'm using a half inch bit and, and mortising in um, almost seven eighths. So we have to make two passes along the length of it. Well, we just trimmed off a little bit more and we'll see how it fits. The difficulty being that it's a very long breadboard at 42 inches. So that it not only has to fit there, but all the way across. Yeah. Okay, clamps will draw this up nice and tight. Uh, we do like to leave a little horn sticking out on the end here so that when we're, when we're testing for fit, we can just knock it off if necessary, put it back on to reassemble it. So what happens in here is that you notice the groove sticks out on the end of the breadboard. And what I do is route a groove of the same size with a jig um, to go along the edge of the table along here. And then we take the ebony spline and set it into there, into the groove. And it's glued only in the main tabletop itself. It's not glued into the breadboard. So that with seasonal movement, this can expand. And you can, you can tell summer and winter, looking at one of my tables, how humid it's been, because th this will either be sticking out a little bit or will be perfectly flush in the winter.